Good afternoon, everybody. Really appreciate everyone taking the time uh, and really excited to be here uh, for this wonderful hearing. I am Michael Stinziano, one of the City of Columbus co-chairs for Age Friendly Columbus. You'll be hearing from and we're joined by Fran Ryan, another vice chair. We also have Director Susan Beaudry from the Osteopathic Heritage Foundation. Uh, Katie White is in the back to be of assistance and a resource. Uh, previously was the Age Friendly Community Coordinator at the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission. And we also have Director Collins from Department of Rex and Park here. Thank you all for your participation and for the opportunity to have today's hearing. I'd also like to thank the JC Arms apartment complex as well as members of the public either that live at the JC Arms or surrounding community uh, for taking the time and letting your home serve as uh, our committee meeting and hearing room and for all you continue to do to lend support and framing and discussion of this important initiative. Uh, I do wish to remind those members of the public that wish to speak, ask questions, or provide any insight. Uh, Katie is sitting near the sign-in sheet. Uh, we'll go in order as people sign in. Uh, but really the purpose of today is to highlight the Age-Friendly Age Friendly Columbus Initiative and the work we've done so far. You'll hear um, really kind of the background, uh, what was some of the motivation, the goals, uh, and some of the discussion of where we could be moving forward. Uh, the commitment that Katie always provided is that we were working to ensure that individuals of all ages and abilities are able to remain in their neighborhood and live a high quality of life independently. Uh, the commitment also was, and I think the last two years we worked very hard, that we weren't planning for you but with you. Uh, that our communities, our residents, their experiences were going to be paramount in terms of what recommendations and next steps uh, the initiative could look like. Uh, this hearing will be available to the public on the columbus.gov.gov YouTube channel and is currently streaming live online on the CTV website and broadcasting on Spectrum Cable and WOW on Channel 3 and AT&T U-verse Channel 99. I'll now turn it over to my co-chair, Fran Ryan, to, in, uh, to provide her oversight and experience. Fran, podium is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Michael. Uh, I, it's great to be here, and I've been here before, but I don't know if any of you remember that, that I, uh, I've kind of had a long history with the seniors in the community and, and for some of our, a lot of our, our senior housings. Uh, it hasn't been too long ago when we looked around and said, you know, we see the numbers coming in, and we know that the support that they need throughout the city and the county is going to be growing and growing. And I'm so thankful to be able to be part of this as a senior myself, who will be 84 in January, and I'm very proud of that. And yay for the seniors. <laughs> but, but, but I look around the room and I see uh, Tony, who has been the uh, director of the uh, Office on Aging for the county and uh, I appreciate all the work that she has done. And I look in this room and I see a lot of you who have been at our meetings, and I appreciate that. But let me talk about how we got to our, our theory of Central Higher Area on Aging and Franklin County Office on Aging and our age-friendly city and the, and the support that we've had from the private sector. We learned that planning had some, more to do with us looking at numbers and, and, and taking some, some graphics and some, and some information that we would need totally to, to put together a good, a good investment in, in what we're doing for the seniors. And this is what we did. So we looked around and we got all of these wonderful facts and figures. Uh, we learned about the challenges that we all face as seniors, for instance, infrastructure, transportation, and, and uh, housing systems. And uh, I know that I, my husband, who had just passed recently, uh, had a difficult time in the scooter getting around here and about. And, and I would complain, and, and I'd take my complaints to uh, uh, the city, and, uh, which I was a part of for a long time, and said, you know, we've got to do something. We've got to make us an age-friendly city. So we looked at some of the other cities in, in, in the country. And um, with the, the help of, of our mayor, we have, 
we have signed in now and become an age-friendly city. So we are now among, I think, 99 cities in the country, maybe more at this point. And Michael and I were given the opportunity to co-chair this, this great committee. So we learned about the cha challenges and the pre-planning and the longevity of our frustrations with health care, difficulties finding employment, and all of the things that maintain uh, a healthy, I think, a healthy lifestyle for our seniors, keeping you in your home or whatever your home may be, but keeping you healthy and also giving you the, the tools that you need to work with. So along with these, 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 the civic, all, of, all of the planning, we, we built into an infrastructure, and we work with all of the, uh, the parts of the city that all the divisions of the city that will help us with the transportation, with our clean water, with everything that has to do with health, and we put those partnerships together, and we built this community of infrastructure and community of helping seniors. So at that time, then, the city embraced all those initiatives and we've been signed off on now as being one of the cities in the country is age friendly. With that comes support from everybody. And as I look in this room and I look to my right, I see Susan and, and of course, uh, Mr. Collins, who is our director, and of course, con uh, Council Member Stinziano. These three have, and, and our, our, and our Central Ohio Area Office on Aging, and Cindy can't be with us today because she had surgery. But with that, with her part and their part and Tony's part, we have been able to build this wonderful, wonderful organization that makes me excited to be a part of Columbus and to make me know that, that there is uh, a future in taking care of those numbers that are coming in and the folks that are coming into the system. So it, it's, an, it's, a, it's an initiative that is going to last for a long time and we now, you will, you will, what you'll hear is, you'll hear how their support system is going to now turn into, from planning at Mid-Ohio Planning Commission, is now going to be turning into <coughs> an active role to help you to live better and to, and to really be a big part of our initiative. So I thank you for being here today, and I trust that you'll have lots of questions. Uh, that you can give to Katie. No, you can give that. <laughs> All of us will be part of that. But we're, we're really excited to be here, and I think that today's day is a, is a big initiative. And it's an exciting day for me because it's been a long time I'm working with seniors and knowing that we're on the fast track and that things are going to really happen for us in Columbus. So thank you. All right. Now you're going to hear from Susan, who is from the Heritage Foundation, who really uh, their resources have helped us build this program. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? My name is Susan Boudry, and I work with the Osteopathic Heritage Foundations. Um, Katie asked me to come today and be part of this hearing and to explain a little bit why um, our foundation uh, provided some support to help get the Age-Friendly Columbus initiative off the ground. Um, the foundation support organizations and programs dedicated to improving health and the quality of life in communities in cent both Central and Southeast Ohio. And to fulfill that primary objective, we design initiatives that address significant issues that the communities that we work with are facing. Um, we look to find innovative solutions that are sustainable and bring a higher degree of experience of quality of life for all members of a community. Our, age, uh, our Healthy Aging Initiative was created in response to the growing number of older adults in Central Ohio and Columbus specifically. The complex challenges facing vulnerable older adults and the corresponding significant changes in demographics provided the foundation with an opportunity to work with community partners to improve access, coordination, and quality within the systems and programs serving older adults in the community. Can you hear me okay? We're trying to get the mood, the mood. <laughs> 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 the 
the, so the foundation was an early investor in age-friendly Columbus because we saw this as a way to improve the health and quality of life for all members in our community and particularly uh, vulnerable older adults. Uh, Katie White and the team at Morpsey really were dedicated to an inclusive planning process that we um, endorsed and high, were, were in great support of. Um, and feel like this was really in instrumental in their success uh, to completing a citywide survey, uh, neighborhood uh, walk audits, focus groups that were held in multiple languages, if English was not the first language of the participants attending, um, and a variety of public workshops. Building on that um, success and their research with um, continued momentum, Age Friendly Columbus is in the last stage of finalizing a strategic plan that we hope will bring citywide improvements. This broad approach uh, across various sectors I think is a major strength of this plan and it highlights many of the organizations who have had a long-term commitment um, to working on aging issues. Um, and some new organizations that um, are developing an understanding and an awareness and want to be part of um, really truly making Columbus an age-friendly city. Um, one such partner in this has been the Columbus Recreations um, and Parks Department, and it's my pleasure to introduce Director Tony Collins to you to share a few words. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for having us out here, and thanks for being involved in this important initiative. We're very excited to be a part of it as a Recreation and Parks Department. Those of you who have had a chance to meet Mayor Ginther or get a chance to hear Mayor Ginther, you know what he talks about as his priority, and it's neighborhoods, neighborhoods, neighborhoods. And from a, right, I mean, everybody gets to hear that. And, and, and as a Department of Recreation and Parks, we, our, our functions, our missions, our priorities align perfectly with the mayor's priority of neighborhood, neighborhoods, neighborhoods, because one, we want to be connected. We want to help connect our neighborhoods uh, from, to each other, to, to our, our places where we worship, to our schools, to our libraries. Uh, we want to help connect our members of our community, whether they're 8 to 80, to those parks, to those uh, areas in our community that we're trying to get to. So some people, you, you may have heard the mayor, you may probably have not heard me talk a little bit about the Recreation and Parks Department, and I just want to spend a quick minute about the Recreation and Parks Department and why we fit into this. Uh, first and foremost, we have, we have three pillars that we aspire to, that we work every day on. Health and wellness, being one of those, conservation, and social equity. Now sometimes people think of health and wellness and they think, well, well that makes sense, right? We do a lot of, we have community centers where we do a lot of physical activity. Hopefully you've been to one of our senior centers. Where we, where we provide a lot of physical activity and, and uh, education on health and wellness and, and opportunities for people to learn about how to live a healthy lifestyle. Those are some of our staple things, some of the things that people know us for. They know us for our conservation efforts, whether it's our parks and our green spaces and uh, 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 trails and greenways, uh, but also, they, what, but also our, our, our um, access to parks and making sure that our neighborhoods have access to parks is one of those things that think about us. Folks don't also always necessarily think about equity when they think about social equity when they think about recreation and parks, but you need to know that it's on the top of our priority list. And, and I mentioned it earlier, we talk about equal access to uh, whether it's our opportunities for recreation or equal, equal access to our parks and our open spaces. And when we talk about equal access, we talk about our neighborhoods, but we also talk about the 8 to 80. We want everyone to have that equal access throughout our community. So again, this, this, uh, this type of an initiative and, and working with the mayor and the, and the other departments aligns perfectly with those strategies. Um, I have to also mention that, you know, something we call, about, we call the Columbus Way, uh, because this strategy, this, this plan that, that uh, the Age Friendly Initiative has brought about really aligns perfectly with the Columbus Way. We talk about it a lot. It's the idea that public, uh, nonprofit, private sector partners come to the table to find a solution. We don't expect our government to solve problems for us. We don't expect one entity or another to do it. We expect us all to work together in a collaborative way to get to solutions. And this, this, this effort, this initiative, this Age Friendly does exactly that. We as a government entity, as the Recreation and Parks Department, my partners uh, in the city of Columbus and in Franklin County, 
uh, are coming together with our partners in the nonprofit world, the osteopathic uh, heritage society, the, the private sector to help make this initiative go. And we're proud to be a part of that. I should also mention uh, we're very thankful, of course, for the, the foundation and their efforts, their support. We're thankful for Morpsy. Uh, and their efforts in housing the age-friendly initiative the last two years, uh, helping to create this plan, Franklin County and the Office on Aging and all the efforts that have been put in. And my partners in the City of Columbus, I want you to know that as Recreation and Parks Director, I'm representing the City of Columbus today in terms of the administration because our Service Director, Jennifer Gallagher, our Public Health Director, Director Long, uh, our new Public Health Director, Di Director Roberts, who uh, we just did a send-off for Director Long today, um, our Director of Development, uh, Steve Shoney, uh, all are on board with this plan and all are coming to the table to help make sure that this plan is initiated. We believe that all of our departments have a role in looking at things in the City of Columbus from an age-friendly point of view and looking at how we can make sure that we're equitable across the board, whether it's a housing solution, a public infrastructure solution, or a health and wellness opportunity through Recreation and Parks or the Public Health Department. We believe in the plan. We think that this plan uh, has done a great job of reviewing What's, uh, what opportunities are out there where our challenges are. We believe the plan uh, helps determine a path forward. Uh, it's, it's not just a, a plan that's gonna sit on a shelf, it's something that has actionable items that hold each of us accountable for getting our piece of the project done. Uh, and we're, uh, we're especially uh, excited about the fact that this is a plan that is inclusive, that brings everybody to the table uh, from all of our different neighborhoods, whether it's an urban neighborhood, uh, or one of our outlying uh, neighborhoods out on the near east or the far east side or uh, west side. So we're uh, in making sure that it is an inclusive uh, uh, project and making sure that we're making uh, the access and equitable access is there throughout the community. So from the city of Columbus's standpoint, we're excited about the plan and look forward uh, to helping and, and working with our partners in the community to make it happen. Thanks so much. So I really want to thank you all for those presentations. And with that, we're going to open the floor uh, to questions. Katie White has the microphone and the list. And so anyone that signed in that would like to ask question or provide experience, uh, either on the initiative or areas that you think we should continue to look uh, at as we t work towards uh, implementation and next steps, uh, we look forward to hearing from you. So with that, I'll turn the mic over to Katie, and she'll announce the first speaker. There we go. The first speaker is Daniel Sinclair. All right, I have uh, twofold issues, and I'm glad the director of uh, Parks and Rec is here. And uh, we have, one of the things about Columbus is it's a very unique city because of all the festivities and so forth that take place downtown. In fact, uh, just a couple blocks away from us is Commons. The commons and, and, and all the festivities down there must be beautiful. We know they're beautiful because we can hear the music, okay? But yet we don't have access. We don't have a way of getting there. And we don't have, we cannot afford the uh, price of admission. If indeed you want to include uh, seniors, senior citizens in these activities, we have two buildings. There's a building here, there's another building, I'm on, I can't remember the name of it, but it's right down here on Rich Street. Yeah, so there's 500 seniors down there. Is there a possible way, uh, Director, that you could make uh, uh, us a part of that, a, a part of those festivities? Well, thank you for the question. I, you know, what I would say is two things. First looking at things from a strategic standpoint, I think those are exactly the types of issues that this type of a plan is asking the city to look at as well as our partners in the county uh, for two, and I'm just gonna use two examples. One is the infrastructure piece, the connectivity piece. Council member was mentioning on my way in about a crosswalk and a question about, uh, in the comments about crosswalks and accessibility. Yeah, I, I've already heard it. And, and, <laughs> And I will carry that back to Director of Public Service, uh, Jennifer Gallagher, and talk a little bit about that. But that's exactly what this plan is, is doing, is working with us as in our departments and, and saying, okay, are we looking at these connectivity issues? Can people get from our major neighborhoods to uh, points of interest, whether it's a park or a festival, an event, or the library or the grocery store? 
So from a strategic standpoint, that's, I, I think that that's important to point out that that's what this, this discussion is about. From a tactical standpoint of those two particular pieces, um, I, I'm happy again to carry back the conversation about the crosswalk. I don't, I don't wanna say I don't do uh, crosswalks, but I don't have any control. I can go buy some paint. Um, but the, uh, but, and then the festivals and events, while the Columbus Commons is a private space, um, we do have a lot of events that are open and free to the public. Uh, Jazz and Ribs Festival is one of our primary events, if you've been to it. If you had a chance to go to the African American Cultural Festival this year on Long Street, uh, both of those events are free and open, and we make sure that our events have, are easily accessible from that standpoint. Um, I would, do want to say one other thing from a transportation standpoint. I know that our partners, and this is, again, something that's part of the plan, but our partners at CODA and uh, others have some opportunities for transportation. Uh, that get to our spaces, and then when you're in our spaces, whether it's our senior centers at Gilly or at Martin Janus uh, or at CO AAA programming, we often have transportation opportunities there as well. But I know that there's ways that we can improve that. So I've made a note of those two things, and I'll make sure to We can bring hear them the back. music, but we can't afford the price of admission, and we can't get there. Right, right. If you want to include us, you'll probably work out something. I'll definitely make a note of it. <laughs> You want to add yeah. 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 Sure, Katie. Uh, Katie wants to add something, if you're open. Okay. I'll give it back. I'll give it back. Um, I do, we'll highlight the specific strategies at the press conference, which is a week from today. Um, but I do want to say that strategy number nine, encourage public and private events to accommodate guests of all ages and abilities, is something that we'll be partnering with um, a lot of the city departments on because of those very issues. So we want to make sure that working with all of you, we understand those challenges and we create a guideline that can be shared with um, any events, festivals, um, music events around town. And as I highlighted in my introductory comments, I mean, and you've been a wonderful part of the advocacy council of the initiative is we were working together and I think when we have the kind of press conference and, and the release in a couple next week um, it will highlight a lot of the features we've heard before that we are listening we are working together and director Collins and some of the other directors have always appreciated that feedback uh, at the various events okay. uh, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that um, uh, director of public services Ms. Gallagher isn't here because we've talked about that crosswalk. We've been talking about that crosswalk and believe. We talked to the mayor about it. Yeah, and we talked to the mayor about it. And believe me, it's a, it's a horror story uh, in, in watching some of the people trying to get across the street to that bus stop, going across four lanes of traffic. And uh, since we've talked to the mayor about it, we've been dealing with this. I, I have a letter in my hand. I won't take your time to read it from Ms. Gallagher. That's, that told us that indeed, if, if our folks are really concerned about their safety and going, they can walk 300 feet down the street <clears throat> where they have a crosswalk for Franklin, Park, for Franklin uh, University students. They can walk down there 300 feet, cross the road, blah, blah, blah. In fact, they just put up some beautiful lights for them. All they have to do is hit a button and, and these flashing lights come on. Caution, caution. They're concerned about the students down there getting across the street. Here we have senior citizens. I don't really know if, uh, if Columbus is really uh, uh, sincere about being age friendly. Are you taking care of something about our folks getting across the street safely? Are you concerned about them? So I appreciate the, the follow-up and absolutely we're concerned. I, I think this process was to identify those areas, uh, but really start wearing a aging and everything lens when we have our approaches. You're right, when we have student concerns, uh, there's a process and procedure in place that's a little quicker to respond and we've got work to do. And I think that's what the ongoing commitment and investment and future age-friendly uh, initiatives is going to show. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate the question. Next up is Randy over here. Okay. First of all, thanks a lot for coming. Appreciate it. Uh, before I talk about what I want to talk about, just to piggyback on what he said about the crosswalk, there's no handicap ramp by that bus stop. 
So if you get off the bus stop and you need that handicap ramp, you have to go down about 20 yards, 10 yards, 20 yards, whatever, to the driveway, go into the street, and come diagonally 50 or 60, 70 feet to this driveway to come up. So being in the four lanes of traffic for that long, I think it would behoove the city to, to put in a, a handicap ramp. Okay, now the issue I want to talk about is CODA. And until May of this year, the number two East Main bus used to come down this way on East Main, turn north on Grant, and come down Rich right here where we have a bus stop right across the street. Also a bus stop right by Nazareth Towers with those seniors. In, in May, they rerouted that number two bus to come down East Main, turn left on Grant, and then go on Mound to High. They replaced this with a number 11 bus, which comes once an hour. Now, putting that aside, the number seven bus comes up East Main, turns right on Grant, the same way the number two bus does, and goes down Mound the same way the number two bus does. Both of those happen four times an hour. So eight times an hour, they have buses going from East Main and Grant to Mound to High. We have once an hour. The other big issue is this. If we're shopping east and want to come back home, where we used to be able to get off the bus stop right here, with our packages, in bad weather, a lot of us can't walk very far for whatever reasons. Now that it turns, the number two turns left on Grant, the closest bus stop to here is on Grant between Noble and Mound. I brought this up one time about two or three months ago at a CODA meeting, and Mike McCann, who I think is the director of planning, routing or whatever, he says, oh no, we have a stop right across from McDonald's. They looked it up, they don't have a stop. They said the city wouldn't let them put one in there. Now, I'm not looking forward to having to come with packages in bad weather and having to traverse that route to get back home. Because of that, I don't shop where I like to shop. Save a lot. Walmart, uh, restaurants in Bexley, Great Eastern Plaza. I don't go to those places anymore. It's easier for me to get to and come back from Walmart at Great Southern, all the way out there, than it is to go to Walmart just down Main Street. Now, one last thing. At these meetings, they keep telling me it's got to do with the number of riders, okay? There are only two st bus stops on Mound between Grant and uh, High. They're both about 150 yards apart, and I have never, ever, ever seen anybody get on the bus there. Now, if they want to compare the numbers today from here to there, <coughs> the numbers will be, be skewed because the seniors don't use this anymore. Some of them will walk over to that bus stop to get up to Mountain High, to get to, 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 to Broad and High. What used to take six minutes to get from this bus stop to Broad and High now takes on an average of 20 to 22 minutes because we have to take this bus once an hour, if we're on time, get off at Main and high, or at uh, Mountain High, wait 12 to 14 minutes for the number two bus, and then take that down the Broad and High. I can't believe that more people are getting on that bus there. If they were to have the number 11 come downtown like it does now, and continue on Grant to Mound, and go down, and put the number two bus coming here, Grant down Rich, to third and across the Mound, which 11 does, they would cover the exact same territory. We would have a bus stop here four times an hour, they would have buses stop there five times an hour. If you could put some pressure on these people, talk lodge, do them, bribe them, whatever you gotta do, <laughs> we'd, really, we'd really appreciate it if we could get this bus stop back. So I think, as I, you can appreciate, CODA is an independent agency uh, that the city collaborates with them, but they have their own independent board 
Uh, they created their rerouting structure. I know they are continuing to look to update that based on feedback, so I would encourage all the residents to continue to provide that feedback. Uh, I would hope, and maybe Katie, I know I'm putting you on the spot, to talk a little bit about transportation accessibility that we saw through the initiative and some of that discussion, uh, but happy to take your concerns uh, with the folks that I work with over at CODA about what changes have they heard, seen, and, and where we can get back to you on having things updated. When you say, when you say that they're looking at, uh, at changing, you need us to talk to them. A lot of this has gone to every open CODA meeting. Petitions have been submitted at those meetings. And we're at the end of, end of our ropes. Okay. I appreciate you sharing that. Did anybody else want to weigh in before I said anything? Okay, so a couple of things. One, CODA is certainly working with us on um, our plan and something that you'll probably, you've heard of or you'll hear more about our first mile connections. So in redesigning the transportation system to meet a lot of competing needs, um, we've heard a lot of concerns coming out of that, right? Meeting one person's need almost always is gonna you know, change another person's need. So making sure that we're connecting folks from those first and last miles from their home to the bus stop and back and vice versa. Um, I'll also say coming from the social services gerontology side of things, being in this role in the last two years has helped me really appreciate how long some of the planning processes take. And I know it can be really frustrating when you feel like you're voicing your concern, but those concerns are going into the long range planning. So you might not see the outcomes that you're hoping for right away, but down the line, they certainly are listening. So um, you know, through my rose colored glasses, I wanna say that it is important for you to keep showing up to those meetings because the minute you stop, the minute the concerns aren't on the table anymore. But with so many competing concerns, it does take a little bit longer to see the specific results you might be looking for. But we're working on it. Okay. Thank you, Randy. Floating around the room here. Did anybody else want to say something? Okay. So um, in keeping with our timeline, we still have time for questions related to aging in community and age-friendly Columbus. Um, next on the list is Debbie, if you'd still like to speak about the project. Okay. Go Hi, my name is Debbie, as you all know, I'm Debbie Bias. Yes. I came in here when I was 66, you do the math, and I'm still here. But now, <clears throat> let me tell you something. I understand perfectly where you build up buildings, you know, for the senior citizen, but what about how the people are doing the inside? Mm -hmm. How do they do it in the inside? I mean, I can see what you're doing in the time I've been here since 66 up to now, which now I'm 81 years old. But inside of the building, don't we count? This is what I want to know. Makes sense to me. This is what I would love to know. Now, they have a severe roach problem in this building. Oh, yes. <laughs> and what I want to say to you, 81 years old, number one. Number two, I have heart problems. Number three, I'm on dialysis. I went in the office, I asked them if you could get your maintenance man to help me move the stuff out of, off the top shelves where I couldn't do it, you know? I can't give you my maintenance man. Go to Jody, Jill, I'm sorry, Jill. I go to Jill. Jill tells me about, you can hire a company. Why would I pay a company 40 to $50 to move two sets of dishes off the third shelf? <laughs> That's what's up there. A set of glasses and two uh, dishes. I haven't been up there. They have been up there for years. Wow. You know? And I can't understand. She can't understand what they're saying about um, get on a step stool. I was told to even get somebody in here to help me. Who am I going to get in here to help me? Number one. So, Number two, if they get hurt in here, who's going to be blamed for it? We are. <laughs> me? May I um, 
May I say something? Yes, you okay. may. Yes, you may. Okay. So, um, unfortunately, we aren't able to weigh in on specifics going on in the building. But as a whole, um, I think you bring up a good point in challenges in healthcare and ongoing quality and, and differing needs. And I have to say that what we're experiencing now is unprecedented growth of our older adult population. So we've never before had the systems or supports to be able to react to um, or anticipate a lot of the issues. So, you know, I'm sure if we took the time and we sort of um, tried to listen to both sides, we would see that for the most part, people are trying their best. And we do need to hear specific issues like this to really empathize and understand what's going on day in and day out. Um, but again, kind of cutting ourselves a little slack, we just haven't dealt with a system that's growing this fast, this much um, over time. So um, continue advocating on behalf of residents in senior living complexes, and we will be giving specific attention based off of a program in New York City that looks specifically at where older adults are populated densely and how we can look at their issues too. So. Thank you. But what I'd like to ask you, as as far as us in here, to sit in here, oh boy, <laughs> but the people in here, is there a place that I can call or somewhere we can get some help? Yes. Oh, I do. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. boy, that's a laugh. <laughs> well. Wow. I would say that it always helps to start with the big, the big, well, that's a, that's a, that's a difficult thing to say. That's not true. I think we, we can call senior options. We can call the area agency on aging and just continue to advocate. I mean, I know that there are lots of issues and there's always going to be competing needs of folks, but um, for the most part, you know, the systems we're trying to react and, and do the best that we can. Okay. Okay. In a hot seat today. Okay. Ron, Ron is next. And I want to say we have 15 more minutes left. So um, we've got a couple more people after Ron. Okay. I want to make sure we're on TV because I want to make sure that this, before you all came here six years ago, they had the same people with different jobs. So I left, I left the tape and I waited two months. So I was waving and I'm gonna make sure you tell me where I can buy the tape. Instead of watching TV, I want my son in Chicago to see the Columbus Live doing something for people. Sure. So anyway, here I am. I'll make it fast, I'm known as Motor Mouth. All I say is we are in America and we all have a, a purpose and that's to be happy. Now, we're all gonna die. You're a man, woman, black, white, Chinese, I don't care myself. Only because if you pick your fingers red, so don't put me into a category, but that's what we all are, because you have a position, you have a, I don't like the situation of the, of the thing, I waited 48 years to find out that you have a 50 and overs club, and, you, and all of a sudden, boom, I got 60 people that I barter, and I don't think you're allowed to barter. So I make that quick, because of the political side, whether you're Democratic or Republican or, or general, whatever. When I say you want some business, how many people will you give a discount? Not me, the people. Not my name, the people. The dispatch went under, so-called, but they get royalties. Michael Jackson stopped. He still went to London and got paid, and you got the Tiger Woods. 60 million people say, well, they blah, blah, blah. I'm not slandering nobody. I'm just saying, don't be afraid to say, if you're on the phone, you can't see that person. And they say, they're the balls. Well, I dare them to tell me they're the boss because I call them ignorant. Because when you're ignorant, you're paid to be quiet because you're not supposed to know the mercy's ministry. That's enough. Sorry. Appreciate the feedback. And I think, as Katie mentioned, kind of the initiative was, and I, and I highlighted, that age and everything approach. So if it's people particularly maybe calling 311 and making sure those concerns are addressed, that that respect's there, we will continue with that commitment. And we appreciate you. It's been a, a great process, and we've really appreciated uh, everyone's voice and engagement. Okay, um, James Bodie would like to speak about the driveway. Okay. Hey, good afternoon. 
Uh, the only thing I have is the driveway. You got a big hump that when you come in, you're going uphill. When you go out, you're going downhill. Yeah. You scrape your car. Your car gets scraped. Insurance ain't paying for that. So what can we do to get that leveled off so that we won't damage our vehicle as we come in or go out? And so another property question. Have you shared it with the property management? I put it to you like this. I'm not going to talk about management, good or bad. A lot of stuff you address goes in and come out. It don't get addressed. I mean, you can, you can, voice, you can voice your complaint. You can voice your complaint. And, and it, doesn't, it doesn't, a lot of times, it doesn't help to, conv uh, to give your complaint. Like when the elevator is down, mm -hmm. you got people on the 11th floor. How they gonna get down there if the ambulance got to come and bring them down? The door is locked you, on, on the, from the second floor to the first floor, you got to climb. You got to climb down, yes, you got to climb down or climb up. So as Katie shared, we can't necessarily address specific property issues, uh, but we'll work with you to address the concern maybe offline, uh, either elevators or the driveway. But in terms of the age-friendly initiative, a little more uh, micro-level discussion there. Okay, well, okay. Uh, my main concern is really the driveway. I understand. Because see, when we got the, the walkers or when we got our, our hum-arounds or whatever, we got to go across the street. We got to go down that hump. But one time someone will go down there and go turn over. Understood. Well, we want to stay on task with the speakers, if that's okay. But you can catch me or Mr. Weavers in the back and the other tie. Uh, happy to discuss any specific issues where we can be helpful in our role on council. We saw, and, we didn't know that. and we'll go on. Um, I do want to mention 311 for different um, concerns around infrastructure, um, but also the program I, I mentioned earlier where we're looking at senior residences and accessibility around the building certainly incorporates things like walk audits so we can experience the challenges that you all are experiencing and hopefully advocate on your behalf. So um, the next person is Genevieve. I don't think you want to hear my story because I can, I can handle the environment outside. It's the inside. We need a new administrator in here. That's all I have to say. The, the hearings focus on the Age Friendly Columbus Initiative, and uh, Mr. Weaver and I will hang out uh, after the hearing to discuss any specific concerns where we can be helpful. If the county has other advocates that may be able to weigh in, uh, we will work with you all on that piece. We have um, two more individuals left, and the first one is Pam. Pam, do you still have a question in regard to age-friendly Columbus? Sure, absolutely. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Pam McCarthy with Central Community House. I'm also a senior citizen. Um, and as I become older, I see lots of things. And I heard what you all had to say here. And while it is about where you're living and that, I want you to know I heard you. And um, those things are important. And I'm glad you could speak it today and that, Councilman Stinziano, you're going to look at that. I would like to talk about a little bit about my aging process, which I look pretty good now because I just got out of the hospital. But I had difficulty, I had heart trouble, and I had difficulty walking. And what I found is I didn't have a handicap sticker because I'm usually able to do it. And I believe if I can walk, if I can work, then that should be a space for somebody who really needs it. And having an elderly mother in a wheelchair, I always get really upset when all the handicap is taken by people who are handicapped. There's not enough for folks. Um, I don't know why we can't, um, build community, like people are inside here. Where is the inter, hi Daniel. That's my buddy there, I haven't seen him in many years. Um, but w where is this community we need to build? 
there is folks in here, you've got a voice, but you need other voices to rally with you. So you need advocates, you need people who care. What's missing from this is multi-generations of people, of caring people who care about community, who care about, and one day they're going to get older and they're going to see, just like I'm seeing. So we need to build community. You, you need somebody to talk with. You need somebody from the outside that comes in that understands things and can advocate for you. So I encourage this as a first step, but there needs to be a lot more people in the room for that. I don't understand why you look at an arts festival or something like that. First of all, if you can't walk really well, you need to stop and take rests. And every bench downtown is occupied by people who can walk. Now, I don't begrudge it, but I'm saying it's an issue. And so a piece of the PR we got to do is people got to think about stuff that if someone elderly is walking by you very slowly and you see there's no benches, we need to tell people, they need to say to people, do you need to sit for a moment? We need to get out of our piece of how life looks to us to help others. The other issue is about in parking lots and stuff like that if the handicap's all taken or whatever, or if you wanted to go to the arts festival, why can't golf carts or like the carts that are at the airport take people down there that can't walk around, but they can sit in a golf cart. And there is golf carts all over the place, but they've got the workers of the fair in them. So I think there's things we can do to get you on the outside and get the outside on the inside and build community around making this, it's a quality of life. Everybody in this room should be able to go enjoy an arts festival, be able to walk it or to um, go there in an open cart or to be able to get a shuttle to get you where you need to go. So um, those are my big points. The access thing, the transportation, um, looking at things even in parking lots where people have to go from, um, how many of you know the Martha Moore House? center of OSU, which is on Kenny Road. Um, they've got like, you know, all these handicapped, they're always filled, and I see older people on walkers having to walk clear through a parking lot to get to the doctor's office, and it just seems like we could do a better job. And get you out and not be so isolated. You should be, you belong to this community, we should be hearing you, we should be working with you, and we should be coming in here, and you should be coming out and being with us, and we should make sure that happens, and we just need to rally community around this. Did you have something uh, to say, Frank? Could, could I just add something? Yeah. I'm in an inter, in, intergenerational apartment, okay? So I, but I, and I know it's difficult for everybody to have that, but I do believe that we need to reach out to you to come see us or us to go see them and i think maybe that'll happen soon uh and it, if it isn't from transportation it'll be from shopping and when you go into a grocery store and they only have or any store and they only have three or four golf carts get on them because i have gotten on so many i don't think they like me to go in the stores but when you think about it and how do you reach the shelf when everything's so high so there are things that you can do to advocate. She's absolutely right. And there's things that we, you know, when I say we, I mean, I'm 84, so, you know, I'm with you guys. But, 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 I'm still in a, in a situation where I have a lot of young people to interact for me and I interact for them. A lot of them have never kept house before. A lot of them don't even know how to use a garbage chute. Okay, so I can help them and, and they can open the door for me. So. So let's, let's, let's look at it as a two-way street on this whole uh, fabric, I call it the fabric of, of society. Okay. I'm so, we have to, we have yeah, to we go have to, to our get, last to speaker. To the next speaker. Eldon, is that right? <coughs> Eldon. You know, I, I was thinking about, you know, we have more and more housing downtown. But you have to go on the bus or have a car to go to 
to the grocery store. Yeah, and, and the mayor, the ex former mayor, built all that new housing, that expensive housing on the other side of High Street for the rich people. You no. know, I mean, and, and there's there's no. There's no grocery store downtown, you know, and it's like, I work at Thurber BP, part-time on Neal Avenue, and Michael knows where that is, and, um, you know, they, they used to have the giant eagle, there, right across the street from Thurber Towers. And now they don't even have a grocery store. You know what I mean? You talk about age friendly. You know, how are these old folks supposed to, you know what I mean? They're living in down, you know, they all have to go up, up, up High Street or down to, down to Brewery District to Kroger. You know, and then, they, you know, is there a way that goodness sake, I want to say, hey, we, we need to stop building so many condos for the rich and build a, build a grocery store downtown, build a giant eagle right downtown. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think a in our age-friendly discussion was, yeah. as I mentioned, wanting people to be able to stay in their neighborhoods. And a qual component of that is grocery store, other accessible access yeah. to different services. Uh, yeah. As mentioned, we cannot dictate where people decide to invest a grocery store. Or just, you know, when the giant eagle left the one community, that was part of the concern uh, was where the seniors that were in Thurber Village were going to have uh, the ability to have quick access. We're concerned about that and continuing to try and find solutions. But again, as I think you've heard across uh, the panel today and answering some of your questions, your advocacy, uh, your voice, and, and wanting to continue to collaborate with you, so we're not doing it for you, but together is going to be vital. Really appreciate everyone's questions. Again, Mr. Weaver from my office and I will stay to address any specific questions, but really want to thank you all uh, for taking the time to learn a little bit more about the Age Friendly Columbus Initiative. Uh, the two-year uh, work that the task force and many individuals did uh, to those that spoke today and support. Really appreciate your time and ongoing advocacy. And as always, have to thank my staff, uh, Kevin McCain, Trenton Weaver. Katie is not my staff, but her work with the Middle Ohio Regional Planning Commission uh, has always been appreciated. Your feedback continues to be what guides us uh, in this process and what the city is going to do next. My door is always open. Feel free to call my office at 614-645-8084. Those at email, mstenziano at columbus.gov. Anyone looking for more in information on the Age Friendly Columbus Initiative, you can go to the website, www.agefriendlycolumbus.org, or call 614-233-4167. Uh, as you've heard us allude to, next week at 10 a.m. Uh, on Wednesday, Tuesday, will be the age-friendly uh, Columbus press conference with the mayor. Uh, it's going to be held at the Gateway Film Center at 1550 North High Street uh, to kind of, again, discuss where we've gone or what we've done and, and where we're going to go forward. So to be continued, but really appreciate the opportunity to present a little bit of what's brought us to this point. Uh, really, again, appreciate all your feedback. We are hearing you and continue to look forward to collaborating and all anywhere and everywhere that we can. Thank you all. I, this will serve as the uh, ending of the hearing and wish you all happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir.